All right, today in this black box, we have the Alienware X17R1. It is currently March, 2022. This came out in 2021, and I'll explain why. I bought this version instead of the new one. All right, so it comes in a deceptively heavy box. Woo! That's heavy. Just a plain black box, really. A little bit of smush there. Hopefully it's not damaged. Nice security tape here, and let's find out what's in the box so a nice padding on the box here there's a big section here i guess keep it protected because it's shipped in this black box it says we're game here very nice white box here oh there's a little pull-up tab i didn't have to grab like that the inside here is this giant power brick so and that's basically it there so inside here is the power brick itself quite a large brick that's a big boy that's a big boy i don't see a little power icon there you know what's in there 330 watts this is the old style brick. This is one of the downfalls of getting the 2021 version. It comes with this big brick instead of the slimmer one with the 2022 version. And this is your three prong plug, of course. And then there's a standard uh, barrel port here on the DC and for the Alienware here. This guy just plugs in here. Pretty common sense. So there's a little guy here. That's to help you get out of the box. And there's an arrow here. Also, it's in like a little plastic bag type thing. This is like a little sheath that goes in. And here's that. So it's a cool design for the box. It has this black oval kind of line that it has on top here. It says Alienware here. It's a little tag let you know how to open it. On the box itself, you can kind of see the design. I don't know if it's going to come through in camera. It's on the back as well. There's basically all the parts of the laptop taken apart here. It's pretty nice. So let's pull up as it tells me. It doesn't do anything. Oh, so we'll let this, oh, this is the magnetic league that people talk about. Oh, and so that's a very nice display there as well. See that, it's very nice. It says X17 here. You can see the keyboard and hex shape here. And here's the actual laptop. And then let's lift this guy up. Comes out nice, it's really not that heavy. A little Alienware booklet here. Of course, this is the recycled plastic guy yeah, that was inside my Dell XPS 9710 as well. They're saying this is made out of 100% recycled plastic. There's some whales up here. Yeah, but it's very nice how they have this. I mean, it's a little overkill, I guess, because you're never gonna see this outside of unboxings, but maybe they wanted YouTube style unboxings, who knows? Inside here, we have standard stuff. A little Alienware card, Alienware stickers, of course. Generic paperwork, and a little quick start guide. This is actually my first ever Alienware computer. I have multiple Dell computers, but I recently purchased an Alienware monitor, 38 inch, so I'm very happy with it. All right, so here is the laptop itself. Once again, you have your little plastic bag type thing around it. Unsheath the laptop. Could be the lighting I have here. This is the first time I've seen one in person, but it's not as white as I thought it was gonna be. It's more of a off-white, almost, a super light gray i mean it's very white still but it's not like as white as this box certainly you can tell there's a difference there this is gonna be off camera but i'm gonna hold it next to my monitor it seems pretty close to the monitor all right on the back of the device itself here is a usb c and it has a power icon next to it so i assume that's thunderbolt and you can plug it into usb c power obviously it won't be powerful enough to game on but you can still just do regular functions on that i think it's thunderbolt 4 usb a an ethernet port USB-C display port. Does not have the Thunderbolt icon, I'll look it up. And C, an HDMI port, another USB-A port, a micro SD card, and another display port. So this one's USB-C display port, this one's mini display port. This guy is super cool looking. Obviously a lot of vents through here. On the side of me, we have more vents, and then a headphone jack in the back, which I don't like. The headphone jack should be closer to the front. I'll explain why later. Again, nothing on this side either, it's a vents and a power port. The bottom has more of the honeycomb ventilation action. Seemingly easy back to take off. I have the Dell XPS 9710, and it was a huge pain to take that back off. So, did not like that. All right, so let's do a little one finger lift action. Shouldn't be no problem. All right, we have this little guy protecting the keyboard. Here's the keyboard, keyboard deck. You can tell here that little black line that has Windows Hello, which I've come to like a lot. A little bit of Alienware branding. It's pretty black in here. I thought it was going to be more of a lighter gray, but it's a darker black than I was expecting. I like it, but I thought it was going to be more of a grayish hue. I, mean, I knew it was supposed to be black, but sometimes black is different than black. So mine is the Alienware X17R1 with the i9-11900HK 3080 and the Cherry MX low profile keys. So they did not have this in any stores that I went to, so I ordered it blindly. I mean, I've watched a lot of reviews on it, of course, but I've never actually touched the keyboard. And 
I've purchased a lot of laptops trying to find the perfect laptop, which obviously doesn't exist, but I tried. And there's a couple things I've learned about myself in this year of laptops. One, I definitely want a 17 inch screen. Two, I thought I liked a number pad, but I don't think I do. Three, probably most importantly, I'm very particular about my keyboard. Trying to find the perfect laptop, because I'm a, not just game on this, I'm gonna do a lot of work and typing on it. And that was gonna be a big decision maker for me. It's really not that heavy. I mean, it's, it's got some weight to it and some, it feels solid, but it doesn't feel that heavy. So I chose the mechanical keys. I don't even have a mechanical keyboard. It was only a $50 difference, so the price wasn't really a factor, but let's just see what they're like. And I love it. Oh yeah. I think I am going to love that. In my year of laptop searching, I've learned that I really like Dell products. The Dell XPS 9710 pretty close to perfect for me, except I don't like the keyboard. This keyboard, I've had about 10 seconds with it, but so far, it seems pretty amazing. So let's get right to why I chose the 2021 version over the 2022 version. I've watched a couple of videos from Mash IT and Justin Tech Tips. They both had this 2021 version and they both ordered the 2022 version. And from their initial benchmarking, it didn't seem like the 3080 Ti was much improvement over the previous 3080. In addition, the 2022 edition doesn't currently at this point have a 4K screen and I want a 4K screen. So I will be gaming of course, but I will also use this for regular work, typing, just general life activities. And to me, the 4K screen makes a huge difference. The Dell XPS 9710 has a 4K screen and it's probably the best screen I've ever seen on a laptop. Now there is a big jump, I believe, from the 11th gen processors and the 12th gen processors. However, I got this for about $2,600. So about $1,000 less than what cost to buy the new 2022 version. And I did that with a pretty fully loaded one. So obviously for my roughly $2,700 stock price, a little under three grand total shipped, I'm getting obviously the Lunar Light. That's all we can get it in. A one terabyte NVMe solid state drive the Cherry MX Ultra Low Profile Mechanical Keyboards, which apparently I love, the 17.3 inch Ultra High Definition 4K screen, 3840 by 2160 at 120 hertz, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, the 3466 megahertz option, and of course the i9-11980HK, and the RTX 3080 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Let's power this bad boy up. The Alienware head is the power button. Oh, look at that, lighting up right off the bat. Oh yeah, also the 2022 option does not currently have the RGB trackpad. This one does. It's possible it could be coming to future models, but this current one does not. There you go, see it lighting up. Now this RGB keyboard looks pretty good. The first RGB keyboard I ever had was the Razer Pro 17. And I didn't like it at first. While well, I ordered the Legion, I got it without an RGB keyboard and then I regretted it. And now I have an Alienware monitor that has the Alienware FX lighting and I like the Alienware style. So excited to check this bad boy out. Screen's looking pretty bright. Screen's looking good for sure. To set up your device using a screen reader. It apparently gets bonkers loud. So it'll be interesting to see. And there were a lot of complaints I saw about the speakers. Again, all I heard was that little instant right there, but that sounds pretty good to me. I have the Dell XPS 9710, which I've mentioned multiple times, and it has pretty good speakers, I think, for a laptop device. So it'll be interesting to see how this compares. So to my eyes, the screen looks nice and bright. It is not a touch screen, of course. Trackpad lights up when you touch it. The trackpad does actually depress the Dell Precision 7760, and it didn't, it was just pure haptic feedback. Now, you all don't get to see, but I'm gonna type on it for the first time. And I do like typing on it. When you don't have a number pad, you really want a number pad. But when you have a number pad, a lot of times you don't use it and it's just wasted space. It does feel like the, since on this side we have the media keys, it does feel like, I guess it is, this trackpad slid it over a little bit, but not as drastically like on a keyboard that has a number pad. Either way, it seemed pretty good typing on it, so we'll see. And the screen looks great. So again, I got lights on it here, like in my uh, quote unquote studio here. And it still looks really good. I don't know why, but I do just like the Alienware logo and the Alienware font, just the all caps Alienware. I don't know, I like it. All right, and it is Windows 11. Now this is home and not pro, I believe. Oh, you can name it automatically, which is nice. I'm gonna name it Alienware. 
X17, pretty easy. I'm finding myself liking the trackpad a lot. It's obviously way smaller than what I'm used to with the Dell XPS 9710. Even with my quality price I got on this, it's still, I think, too high just to buy for just gaming. So I'm buying it, again, to be a daily driver for the most part, and of course gaming. So that's why I want a, such a powerful device. Still liking the keyboard, so this could be a huge winner for me. I have found I do like the facial recognition better, the fingerprint. Now, I wouldn't mind this having a fingerprint as well, but I do find I like the facial recognition better. I'm gonna do some serious typing on it this weekend. So I am going to give you my thoughts on the keyboard, but so far I'm really digging it. I will set it up as a new device. A cool Alienware wallpaper right off the bat. Let's look at personalized and see if there's more Alienware options. I'm sure there will be. Seems to be just that one, but I'll see if I can find more. But either way, I like that one. It's pretty cool. Well, first, let's make sure I got everything I need in here. Let's look at Task Manager. So I don't know how much this is going to show on the camera, but we are here. We have the i9-11980HK memory. We have two of two slots filled. Oh, it says speed 3200, but I thought I paid for 3400. Let's see about that. It does show 32 gigabytes of RAM, but there's the wrong speed. Disc, it shows a one terabyte NVMe WDC. I assume that's Western Digital. I have a Dell XPS 8950 desktop, which also has a Western Digital drive in it. It's pretty quick. So Wi-Fi 6E, the AX1675W, the internal GPU, of course, the Intel UHD graphics, and the discrete GPU is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So let's take a look at what kind of apps are on here. So we have Microsoft Access, Alarms and Clocks, Alienware Command Center, Alienware Customer Connect, Alienware Digital Delivery, Alienware On-Screen Display, Alienware Update, which at Dell Update looks like the same icon. I'm sure they just renamed it. Most of the stuff is just Dell things renamed except for the Alienware Command Center, I believe. Calculator, Calendar, Cameras, Cortana, Excel, Feedback Hub, File Explorer, GeForce Experience, Get help, get started, Groove Music, which no one ever uses, Intel Graphics Command Center, Intel Optane Memory and Storage Management, Killer Control Center, that's your Wi-Fi command, Mail, Maps, Microsoft Edge, Microsoft News, Microsoft Solitaire, Microsoft Store, Microsoft Teams, Microsoft To Do, Movies and TV, My Alienware, because it's like my Dell, Notepad, NVIDIA Control Panel, Office, Office Language Preferences, OneDrive, OneNote, Outlook, Paint, Photos, PowerPoint, Publisher, Realtek Audio Console, Settings, Snip and Sketch, which I love, Snipping Tool. I think when you update, they'll combine it into one. Sticky Notes, Support Assist, Thunderbolt Control Center, Tips, Voice Recorder, Weather, Windows Ease of Access, Windows Security, Windows Terminal, Windows Tools, Word, Xbox, Xbox Game Bar, and your phone. So let's go ahead and look settings and look at this PC. And of my one terabyte, it looks like we have 54.5 gigabytes used, 879 gigabytes free. So that's not bad. Really not that much junk on here. I think, I mean, the Alienware software is debatable about who likes it and who doesn't, but it, it's junk here, but this is not really installed. And you can uninstall this, just uninstall and we'll go away. This Disney Plus app or this ClickChamp or TikTok. Like these things show up in the Windows 11 bar here, but they don't show up in your installed apps. So I guess it's like a, those little boxes that are in Windows 10, maybe I don't know. And let's look at settings. We'll get ourselves some updates going here. I got a ton of updates to download because again, I just opened this. So it's probably gonna be pretty far behind. Let me go ahead and get some software updates in here and then I'll get my device set up. But I'm digging it so far, really liking the keyboard. And you know, we'll take a look. I'll get a better acquainted with it and we'll follow up a little bit more tomorrow. All right, here's the Alienware X17 R1 against the MSI GS66. This is a 15 inch with a 2070 Max-Q and an i7 10750H, which has been a good performer, but you can tell the big difference between the screen size here when we have a 17 inch versus a 15 inch. In addition, the extra height you get with Alienware, which I like a lot. For comparison, here's the keyboard on the Alienware, which I like a lot. There's the MSI keyboard, which I also like a lot. And it has a weird, wonky, extra wide trackpad. And the Alienware just has kind of a small trackpad, but I still like it. Obviously very different backsides. The Alienware X17 has this white with the Alienware logo and the 17. And then the MSI just has 
the little dragon embossing. All right, so here is my Alienware X17R1 next to the brand new Razer Blade 17. This is the 2022 edition with the 12th gen i7 processor, the QHD 240 hertz screen, and the 3070 Ti on the Razer. This of course has the 11th gen i9HK and the 3080, not Ti. These are probably the two best looking laptops you can buy right now, I think, as far as a gaming laptop goes. The Alienware is very unique and the Razer Blade is classic. I had a Razer Blade Pro 17 last year and I didn't like the keyboard and mine was only a 3060, so I need to beef it up. This year, Razer has made the keys slightly larger and you can tell, I don't have my measurement tool here, but they can tell they're bigger. They're probably about the same size, maybe even bigger than the Alienware keys. They probably go a little more travel depth, but as far as like the wideness of the keycap, I think the razor blade might be bigger now. Now, one thing I like about the Alienware is even though they're both 17 inch screens, you can see the Alienware is a little bit taller thanks to this little lip here, which is pretty neat. Both of them have keyboards that light up, of course. My Alienware is set on the Spectrum. This is just solid green, but very bright, crisp keys on the razor blade. It's hard to tell with the Alienware, but if you watch any reviews on Alienware, they don't light up the secondary keys like the exclamation point or that symbol which is annoying, but they do light them up on the razor blade, which is very nice. Now, if you look at the back of them, very different design schemes. The razor blade logo will light up green. I believe it can pulse too. And this, the Tron ring and Alienware head light up on the Alienware X17, changes colors, of course. This one, I believe is just a static green, but it's still pretty cool looking. So again, two very different spectrums of coolness, but I still think these are the best looking laptops. The previous gen was the first gaming laptop I ever purchased, and this is my probably long-term gaming laptop here. So now they're both Spectrum Cycling. The Razer Blade is a tighter color, right? So there's no bleed at all under the keys. All you see is the letter or the symbol lighting up. There's no on the side of the keycaps bleeding out, which looks very clean. The Alienware does have a lot of bleed. A lot of laptops that aren't the Razer have that problem. Some, like on the Alienware keyboard, the A, 10 or whatever the one I have in another video. It's meant to bleed out so you can see it better. Here, I think I like it better, the cleanness of the razor blade. I mean, they're both really cool, but if I had to choose, I think I would choose the cleanness of this. I do like the Tron ring on the back of the Alienware. And the speakers are definitely gonna be way better on the razor blade, these big speakers here. Definitely louder and probably better than the Alienware itself. Had I not purchased the Alienware after watching Mash IT's review, I probably would have purchased this razor blade, but luckily, I got one here to check out anyhow, so. But it's not mine, so I'm gonna just smash it to pieces for me. <laughs> All right, so again, this is about the Alienware, but I thought if you're looking this kind of market for this kind of size 17 inch laptop, the Razer Blade's probably on your agenda as well or on your shopping list, so comparison's sake, uh, they're both pretty great. Razer Blade has the QHD screen, which the Alienware does not. And if you're getting a 17 inch size, you really don't want 1080p, so you either want QHD or 4K. If the Alienware had QHD, I probably would have checked it out too because the QHD does look pretty good. Two months later. All right, so here we are with the Dell XPS 9710 next to the Alienware X17. At this point, I've had the Alienware for quite some time. This is uh, now May 15th. I'm definitely well past my return window. So it's very interesting because a year ago, I was debating between these two devices. Now, by now, the Alienware X17 R2 is technically out. It's probably, I think it's harder to get in stock. And pricing-wise, you can get a much better price on the Alienware X17 R1. And the same thing with the 9710. Now the 9720 is probably out, but probably also hard to get, and you're gonna get a better value with 9710. But last year, I had the same dilemma about which one to get, and I chose this one. And it was an absolute champ for using as a desktop replacement with the WD-19 TBS Thunderbolt dock. It worked great as a desktop replacement. With gaming, it was a little, it was not bad by any means, but definitely not as powerful as this guy. And then I eventually came to hate the keyboards. I do use a laptop as a laptop a lot. The Alienware, hands down, no question, best keyboard I've ever used on a laptop. Maybe even best keyboard I've ever used. I don't know, I love, love typing on this thing. And this really exemplifies a lot of the problems I had with the XPS 9710. So if you look at them side by side, we're gonna put lip to lip here. This is a 17 inch 16 by 10 screen. And this is a 17.3 inch 16 by nine screen. You can tell how much taller up the X17 sits, both down here and up here. Now this one's a touch screen, but like if you're gonna touch 
the bar here, you have to basically rub your hand across the deck. Whereas here, it's a little bit higher. It's only about an inch, but as my friend Tony will tell you, an inch makes a big difference. All my friends are losers. Speaker wise, I'm gonna say that 9710 is probably gonna be much better, but we'll give it a shot. So let's go ahead and try. I'm gonna put it at 50% volume. <laughs> So oh, excellent speakers here on the X17. Also a 50% volume. So Dell 50% volume. I would say they're both pretty good, really. I don't know, it's hard to tell. I would have thought in my brain that the X17 is better, but these are pretty good. Screen wise, I've always said that 9710 is the best looking screen I've ever seen on a laptop, but this one's pretty stellar. So they're both 4K, this one's 4K 120 Hertz. So definitely for gaming and everything else involved, much better. Myself, I've come to realize I do very much like 16 by nine over 16 by 10. So for example, a lot of times I have two things on the screen at once. So here, the browser is set at 100% and this is side by side on the Dell XPS 9710. All right, so say we have the... Hmm. Well, I play audio like that. I think the speakers are better on the Dell, but they're probably louder on the X17. It's hard to say, really. So this is also at 100%. So you can just tell, I don't know. Just for me, when you're doing things side by side like that, when you're doing 50-50, that seems all right, really, either way. But if you're gonna... Like a lot of times what I do is I play a video on this side and then make notes on this side. And that just seems to work better on the X17 than the 16 by 10. because so I have this 16 by 10 Dell XPS 9710 and I have a 16 by 10 LG Gram. So again, very different purposes laptops, but they're kind of the best that Dell offered for 2021. This is the 9710 with an i7 and a 3060. And this is an i9 3080. And of course, if you look at them back to back, no question, big difference here. Stylistically, the Dell is very plain and classic. Alienware is very unique. Uh, this whole Tron ring lights up in course and it's very cool looking, but you know, it's hard to say. Well, my preferred one definitely is this one. I don't know what I'm even saying. You know, spoiler alert. Well, once I bought this one, I gave this one to my son. And this is just my now permanent laptop. All right, so let's do a little backpack test. This is my actual backpack. You can see the Alienware chargers in there. This is the you know, backpack I've had for several years. I very much like it. It has a pouch back here. You can see the 9710 fits just fine. It slips right in there, swallows it down, and it goes so like right at the brim here. The X17 does fit, but it is a, what is it, my camera? <laughs> It is a snug fit, so you can tell it goes all the way to the tippy top here. Now, if you just want to be silly, you can compare how that fits to this LG Gram. So yeah, you can tell it's the Gram fits in there. A little bit taller than the X17, but or than the 9710, but not as tall as the X17, of course. So the Gram is a very different device. Really kind of the polar opposite of the X17. The Alienware is big and beefy. And the gram is light as a feather. It's a heavy feather, but still light as a feather. The gram is very, very reflective. Gram is a very nice keyboard. Obviously the RGB keys on the X17 are very nice. So I'll make a separate video on that. And you can see again, side by side, very different devices, very different purposes. So I will tell you, for example, I can tell how much the, X, the gram leans back that far. And then the Alienware, it's back pretty far as well. But like if you close it up and put the gram on top, it's quite a difference there. If you wanted to be completely ridiculous, you can take a look at the size of a 14 inch laptop. This is a yoga. Yeah, I mean, that's just bonkers, right? What's really bonkers is that the yoga and the gram are about the same weight. The gram might even be lighter. All right, so let's get down to business. It's here. A couple final, final notes. This is just the first look essentially, but Again, spoiler alert is that I am keeping this device. It is quite nice. So it is a bit heavy. Now I did take a little road trip, but I was in a week, I was driving. So I took this with me as my laptop and I was able to game 
Yeah, I went on a trip with my father-in-law and brother-in-law. Very nice trip to land between the lakes. This was heavy, but it was in my backpack with my work laptop. But I just put it in the back of my Jeep, drove there, took it inside the place we were staying, a little cottage, and then, you know, got it out the game, do a little work in the evenings. And it was a pretty great experience. Now, of course, you had to have it charged with the big ass battery pack, but it worked great. Now, later this month, I will be traveling, flying, and I'll have to take my work. I'm going on a business trip, so I need to take my work laptop and I'm gonna wanna take a second laptop, but I most likely will take the Graham instead of this guy. I won't have a bunch of time on this trip to game anyhow or really do much besides just general web surfing. So that might be just web surfing. The Graham's perfectly fine. The Graham can technically game, but it just won't be anywhere near as good as this one, of course. So if I had a long trip, I was gonna be out of town. I probably will still take this in my backpack, but you will notice that weight. I'm super strong, but if you have two laptops, two chargers, it gets a little chunky. All right, so let's we'll take a couple notes here real quick. A couple interesting ideas. The X17, the screen is bright as hell. Many people pointed out the secondary lights do not light up. So like if I want to turn the brightness on the screen up, I got to hit function and then I got to know where the button is to turn it up or down, right? And again, if you're only using one laptop, it's pretty easy to remember that. But if you switch between multiple laptops, it can get a little confusing. The media keys on the side here are very nice. I love those media keys for the volume here. I wish there was a play pause instead of a mute button. I guess for gaming, you might want that mute button, but I would rather have a play pause button there instead of that mute. You can almost always hear the fans, even at low volume like they are right now. But I've said before, Dell has a very pleasant fan noise. They did that with the 9710 and of course the big beefy 7760. You can charge it via Thunderbolt. If you already have the WD19 TVS dock, it will work through that dock as well and get the 130 watts of power through Thunderbolt like the Dell XPS 9710, which is a major selling point if you have Dell products. This is the 4K model. The 4K screen is gorgeous, as you've seen probably next to the Razer Blade and it with the QHD and it, the QHD looks great. But again, just general stuff, non-gaming stuff. I prefer 4K, at least for my gaming purposes. We did try it with Call of Duty and it didn't get quite maxed out, but with uh, Rogue Company, the game I play all the time, I can max everything to Ultra on 4K and still get 120 Hertz if I change it from Advanced Optimus to Discrete Graphics Card, which you have to do through the BIOS, which is annoying, but it works. If you go through there, you'll notice a drastic change in performance. And not just that, there is also a power setting you want to change if you go through the Click in here, let's see, let's go to the battery. There's a power mode here that's balanced and we can change it either through there or through the Alienware app. So there's a lot of stuff you can tweak. There's a lot of settings on a big powerful laptop like this. I'm pretty sure you can use this as a desktop replacement, especially if you have the WD19 TVS Thunderbolt dock. You still gotta use the actual power cord, but it would definitely work as a desktop replacement. It's very powerful. I don't have any problems with it. I don't like the headphone jack being back here. That's annoying. Uh, as you said, you know, if you have a, if you got to plug your headphone jack in, that's a lot of real estate that your headphone jack, you lose cord length because of that. Again, on this side, it's only a power and on all the ports are on the back here. So that's also annoying that there's no actual full size SD card, just the micro SD card. If it had a full size SD card, I mean, I would say this could be a creator laptop. I am a creator and I create stuff. Anyhow, again, another spoiler alert, just spoiler alert city here. I like this X17 so much, it changed my whole world. I've already purchased the Dell XPS 9710, of course. I've now given that to my son and I have the Dell XPS 8950 desktop. I was in a quest for a year to find a laptop that would replace a desktop. And this one really could have done it, but I bought it too late. because I already had a desktop. However, I love this so much. Even this Lunar Light, which I didn't think I would like, now I love it. So now I have bought all the Alienware things. I have an Alienware monitor. I have an Alienware headphones. I have an Alienware mouse and an Alienware keyboard. And I have ordered, yet to be delivered, an Alienware desktop. So if you made it this long, stick around, subscribe, thumbs up, like all that stuff, because I'm gonna start making a whole lot of Alienware content because I love my Alienware and my son has a bunch of Razer products. So we'll do some comparisons with Alien and Razer and I'll show you the various different products. Uh, so stick around because I'm gonna try to make a run to be one of the best small to medium sized Alienware content creators out there. So that means you better watch yourself, Mash IT. I'm coming for you.
Look out, Justin Tech Tips, or should I say Dad Tech? That's right. I hired a private investigator, tracked you down, and I figured out it used to be called Dad Tech. Calm down, people. Mike did not hire a private investigator. He just looked at Justin's community tab. You make Alienware content. I'm coming for you. That's right, Mash IT. I'm coming for you and Gary. That's right, Gamers Heaven. Gonna get you. And that's right, youtube.com slash C slash Mash IT. I'm coming for you. I will take over your channel, dominate all the Alienware stuff. No, I watch all those guys. Uh, specifically, Mash IT, who I've become pretty good friends with on Instagram, or at least it's been nice to me. I don't know if we're friends. I think we're friends. So I do like their channels. Mash IT is the best, of course. I mean, I'm the best, then Mash IT. So I'll take Mash IT down though, and then I'll be the best. So I'm gonna subscribe to all three of those, Mash IT, Justin Tech Tip, and Gamer Heaven. And I'm gonna watch their videos. You don't need to, just watch mine, and I'll tell you if they have any good. So don't watch Mash IT, just watch 5 out of 12. At this point, we're at 15.3 thousand subscribers, trying to build that channel up. We're gonna overtake Mash IT and Justin Tech Tips and Gamer Heaven and be the best Alienware channel out there. Come on. Hey, thanks for checking me out. The Alienwares love it. If you can find it for the deal I got or any kind of better deal, after watching Mash IT and Justin Tech Tips videos, it really doesn't seem worth it to get the X17 R2. So if you can get the R1 for the discount price like I got, it's really hard to beat this device for a gaming laptop. You're definitely not gonna beat it for keyboard. Cherry MS Key keyboard is amazing. All right, thanks for checking me out.